Howell High School is an outstanding public education institution found in Howell, Michigan. Erected in 1981, the school has many achievements, but one of Howell's greatest is its devotion to the performing arts, specifically theater. Each year, Howell puts on two full-scale productions and two small-scale productions. Each tile represents a play that has been done. This year, The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe was chosen by the director and presented itself with a daunting task of creating a whole other world. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe was a fantasy novel written by C.S. Lewis, a British novelist in 1950, and a string of books called The Chronicles of Narnia. The book series has gone on to sell more than 100 million copies and have been turned into major motion pictures in recent years. Lewis stated that the origin of the book series in a quote is follows. The lion all began with a picture of a fawn carrying an umbrella and parcels in a snowy wood. This picture had been on my mind since I was about 16. Then one day, when I was about 40, I said to myself, let's try to make a story about that. Most people are familiar with the source material to an extent, and that's what makes this production so much harder as the audience has an idea of what Narnia should be. It's up to the director and cast to convince you this is Narnia and you are witnessing it. Now, travel through the wardrobe and witness the making of Howell High School's The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. My name is Amanda Malo. I am the theater teacher here at Howell High School. I have been teaching here for 14 and a half years. Hey, I'm Nick Bishop, and I'm playing Edmund. Hi, my name is Becca Bishop, and I'm playing the part of Susan. My name is Annie Courtney, and I will be playing the White Witch. My name is Josh Stanley, and I'm playing the part of Aslan, and I'm also the professor. Hi. Hi, my name is Stephen Bach, and I'm playing Peter Pettensee. When I pick a show, I look at a bunch of different factors. I look, is, does it have a name? Would the kids enjoy it? Is it going to be fun? Um, and I picked this one because I loved the freedom of creativity I was going to have with it. And that's really one of my favorite things as a director. Good! Try that. Once I've picked the show, I usually will do my research. Um, if I don't know it well, I'll try to go see a production of it. I will get online and I will look at images from it. I'll read reviews and I'll really just, I'll try to come up with something that will challenge me, that will be something I have never done before. So it's not just a run of the mill play. We have so much talent here at Howell that I really could have three to four different cast. It was not a problem at all. The audition process was that there was about seven of us at a time in the big auditorium, and we had a few, per a few sentences that we had to read from a character that we chose. And from that, they put out a callback list, and I had been on the callback list for Susan, which was really exciting. And the next day, we have a little meeting about it, and we get a ton of papers and that we have to look over and sort of memorize and create a character. So you have to create a character for yourself and go back the next day. And you get paired with other actors to see how you would work with them. They see what kind of character you create and what choices that you make. And then they pick who would be the best fit for the part from there. Getting the part was just an amazing feeling. It was like overwhelming joy. I, you know, jumping up and down. I think I was actually at McDonald's with a bunch of other kids, but um, and it was it was really wonderful. I think it was really great because of a lot of hard work.
uh, went into it, and then it paid off all in the end. Oh, man. Seeing your name on the cast list is like one of the best feelings ever, um, especially when it's a role that you just really, really wanted. Um, and it's it's really nice, but it's also kind of scary. Like, ah, I have it. I didn't think I'd get this far. Um, but it is. It's a really good feeling, and it gives you a real boost in confidence. I think. A lot of us have an emotional connection to this show that we remember the book or we saw the movie, and so I hope that the audience comes in and remembers that feeling. You know, the feeling of wonder and imagination and creativity and just enjoys the experience. This show for me is actually a dream come true. Uh, ever so, since I was a little kid I saw The Lion, Witch in the Wardrobe as a thing and um, Aslan was my all-time favorite character. From the good guys anyway. Uh, out of the bad guys I really like the Minotaur. And, but yeah, Aslan was always my favorite. And once I found out they were doing plays here at <clears throat> Howell, I figured I'd ask Mal and see if we would do it. Peter, son of Adam. Yes, sir. Okay, stage right. These are your gifts. chairs. They are tools. I need those chairs. Not tools. I've really like. I don't know, I've, I've looked at him from the sibling aspect because I'm really close with my siblings and that's a big thing for me, I guess. And I don't know, Peter, I put myself in Peter sometimes. Like he's trying to find his potential. He's trying to prove to everybody that he can be a good person, I guess. Um, it started when I was in seventh grade. I um, did crew for a play at CTH was called 13 and I was watching all the actors on stage and it was magical to me that they could become this different person when they walked across the curtain and I saw that and I was like I want to do that so then the next time a play came around I auditioned for it didn't make it the first time but then the next one you know kind of get into it like that my brother was in theater my he was a senior when I was a freshman so he kind of forced me in there. He forced me to audition for the fall show my freshman year. And um, I ended up getting a lead. So that's kind of, and then I've, I've fell in love with it. And I've been here ever since. Humans. I mean, I have a sister Lucy who's looking for a fawn. I've developed him uh, through a process of being a brat, you know, and having the ability to change into someone bigger and grow and to be able to show that growth in a character. Um, I would have to say that I love the idea of creating magical creatures, but actually doing it has been a big challenge. I am beyond blessed with one of my really good friends, her name is Angela, and um, we decided to build a two-man puppet to be Aslan. You know, Aslan is this iconic character. He can't just be an actor in a lion suit. Um, so we thought, how do we make this big and powerful? And when he comes out, the audience goes, <gasps> so we, <laughs> we decided to build a puppet. And um, it has been a challenge, and I'm learning a lot about engineering that I did not know before, but it's going to be breathtaking. <laughs> you don't have to be last. Hey, you'll get, uh, you'll get, you'll get, you'll get, you can go in front of us. Today and on Wednesday, 6.30. 
I'll let you out no matter what at 6.30. But Tuesday, Big leap, Thursday, but I would say on don't. this one, one thing we have really bad. aimed for is to make it more of an experience than a play. And we've done that by, first off, we decorated the lobby. The minute the audience comes in, they are part of it. We have interaction with the cast and with the audience. They come out into it. Um, afterwards, we're going to have people come up on stage if they want to get their picture taken with one of our magical creatures. Um, one of the things I'm really excited about, I think that we have percussion ensemble providing oh, live yeah. music, I and I just think live music alone can bring in any yes. audience and really make them feel part of the story. Because don't, uh, you can't let it hard. I always screw up once. Yeah. 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 A lot of so. You guys, I'm just grateful you're willing to give it a shot. Okay? That's, don't, trust me. Do you have a headset? I do not. I came to Missoula and I've had this conversation, okay? Because um, I just don't think they focus on the why. So, we got a problem now in that why does he say okay and then deny it? So, we have to decide why does he deny? Why, I mean, what, we can all talk about it. Why would Edmund deny right now? Because his older siblings came to him, and he's not the most powerful person. Okay. Any thoughts? Coward. See, the point is, Nick, we come up right. with a bunch of different, hey, try this. Hey, try this. See which works. Okay? Exactly. Does that make sense? So I think when you, are those your shoes? I've been using these, yes. Oh, but they're not like a personal. Um, well, I have, I have oh, okay. no, heels okay. that so are hard to walk in. <laughs> um, and I think just letting go, because I have been a part of the production crew, so being able to let go from that um, and let you know the stage manager and uh, assistant director kind of take charge when that was kind of me at one point. Um, so just just being an actor, I think, has been difficult when everything else I've done was like stage manager, assistant stage manager, or anything like that. It's just, um, it's been fun, but it's been very, very different, and it took me a while to kind of let go. I, I'm a very um, like team-oriented player or person, so I, I give a lot of positive uh, feedback to people, a lot of positive energy. I bring a lot of that to the show, and uh, I try to bring some leadership in there, too. Um, I think I bring like, trueness to the show, and I think that's one of the reasons why I was casted, because the relationships I can create and have created with some of my friends who are also lead roles, and my brother, he's uh, playing Edmund, my show brother, so I can really bring like a true relationship to it, and watching that is probably really cool. It's probably true to the heart, and I think, I think that's what I bring. Struggle for me. Um, everybody keeps coming up to me and telling me stop making Peter so sad. So, I guess I need to stop being sad when I'm saying my lines. I feel like I really bring that relationship between the siblings. Like that's the most important thing. Like me and Lucy, I feel like have a better relationship than the others, and I can bring that emotion that needs to be there, and I can bring the the wanting the to be wanting to impress people that's what peter wants to do he wants to impress and make people proud of him well the white witch is a witch um but i think the way that malo definitely tells us to treat the character is that we need to find a way to relate them she stresses that a lot um that we need to relate to our character in some way and so the way that i um, related to the White Witch is that she's kind of losing control of her life and I've felt that feeling before and she's just kind of doing anything that she can go into very extreme circumstances to prevent that happening um, and like that and also it's it's just I've always had fun uh, playing scary characters because it's so different from myself um, and yeah it's just I've just had fun with it and you know um, played off other actors and just played a little bit with the character.
goodness gracious me. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Who are you? My, my name is Lucy. Lucy? Are you a daughter of Eve? A what? A daughter of Eve, a human. Of course I'm human. Good. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Tumnus. I am a fawn. I'm very pleased to meet you, Mr. Tumnus. Now may I ask, oh Lucy, daughter of Eve, uh, how did you get into Narnia? Narnia? What's that? Well, it's this. Everything from this lamp plus the great distant castle, Care Paravel on the Eastern Sea, is Narnia. But how did you get... Goodness gracious me. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. My, my name is Lucy. I'm pretty excited. This is my um, first and final play in this st stage, so I'm nervous, but it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna enjoy. Um, then no one's gonna laugh at me hopping, skipping like a little like freak. And then I also threw a fish, but if I don't do that well, <sighs> no. Make sure it lands in front of the Um, Pete's gonna have a fish. Oh, okay. yeah. Mao just told me that a little bit ago. Cool Pete's a cute kid. I'm. Kind of nervous. I'm going through every note in my head right now. There is a but fuzzy thing on At the same head. time, I was thinking about it on the way in here, and Malo keeps saying how Peter tries to find his potential through the show, and it kind of just hit me like I'm trying to find my potential as well. And I don't know, it's kind of emotional. This is my first show, and I, I just never thought I would be in this situation. Yeah, because. And I'm kind of excited. Malo's um, thing is find your risk and your reward. And mostly for characters, but you can each let go in. It's Isabel's first show. She took a big risk there. It's like all of our first shows. It was a big risk, and we're hoping for that big reward. I, I took a risk as well as with uh, auditioning, I guess. I don't know. I just, I guess I don't see my, my talent. And a lot of people tell me I'm good. And it's like hard for me to believe, but. I really do think taking that risk has helped me find what I'm capable of and I honestly don't think I've seen all of it and I'm hoping that it's not done. Like I want to grow more and I know I will and I'm really excited to see how it turns out. Yeah. Stone, even as they advance.